If you walk down the hallway in any school, you're going to hear some words and some common buzzwords. A couple things you might hear would be intensive interventions, response to intervention, common core. Well, one word you're going to hear, one phrase you're, you would hear a lot would be instructional level. But what does that mean and how do we use that to help kids? My name is Matt Burns. I'm the Associate Dean for Research at the University of Missouri and a professor of school psychology. I want to talk to you today real briefly about a process called Curriculum-Based Assessment for Instructional Design. CBAID is the abbreviation. CBAID is a way to identify a child's instructional level and to use that information to match instructional materials and tasks to student need. It's a powerful instructional tool that is not used as often as perhaps it should be in schools. The whole basic premise of CBAID is the idea of frustration. Why do kids get frustrated? They get frustrated for a couple reasons, one of which is there is a disconnect between what, they're, what we're asking them to do and what they're capable of doing. And so they get frustrated and we see some acting out behaviors as a result. So we have a process, as I mentioned, called CBAID to assess an instructional level. But you're probably aware of other tools that supposedly assess instructional levels. Things like informal reading inventories, the Fontes and Pinnell, the DRA, etc. But research has shown that those types of measures oftentimes lack reliability data, and so we're not really sure if those data are resulting in good decisions or just error. And also, we did several studies, and we looked to see what are the um, effects of using informal reading inventories, such as the Fontes and Pinnell, and we found diagnostic accuracy of 54%, which means you can give the 20-minute measure or just flip a coin and get the same uh, correct level of correct decision making. We looked at other research, which I won't go into now. But CBAID was developed in the 70s by Ed Gickling and his colleagues to assess reading and other academic tasks. Essentially, you sit with a child and have them read to you, engage in math, etc., and determine the percentage of known items within that task. So if a child reads for one minute and they read 93 to 97% of the words correctly, that's considered an instructional level. When a child can read 93 to 97% of the words correctly, that means that they can interact with the text successfully to comprehend it and be successful but still learn something new. For most other tasks, we want more like 85 to 90%, spelling words, sight words, math facts, etc. There is some research looking at math instructional level. If a child can do a written computation problem with 14 to 31 digits correct per minute in second and third grade and 24 to 49 digits correct per minute in fourth and fifth grade, that suggests that they're working at an instructional level. Most of the research that I do is as an interventionist. So I've, I've done some reliability and validity work with CBAID, of course, but much, much of what I do is go in and collect data, see what kids need, use those data to drive intervention. So we've done a couple things. We've, we've done survey level assessments to find the material that represents an instructional level and then use that to teach children. And when we do that, we see increased time on task, higher task completion, and, and higher task comprehension. It also helps to identify that sweet spot where it's not too easy either. So oftentimes we respond by giving children easier material but if we make it too easy, then we don't see a benefit. So it helps us to really identify where that sweet spot is. We also will do pre-teaching. We've done quite a bit of studies where we go in with children with learning disabilities, emotional behavioral disorders, even severe cognitive impairments, and do pre-teaching. Uh, so we will pre-teach enough words that the kids are supposed to read, math facts, uh, spelling words, letter sounds, etc. And so once a child can read 93 to 97% of the, of the words within text or can complete the task with 90% accuracy, when we do that, we pre-teach so they're able to perform these tasks with high level of accuracy, we see time on task go way up, task comprehension, etc. We did a study with, with, um, with 30 children in third grade identified with a reading disability and simply engaged in that simple activity. Pre-teaching took about five minutes. And over the course of 12 weeks, we saw their rate of growth uh, 
grow at a rate that met or exceeded the general population for two-thirds of the kids and significantly outperformed the control group, which was much more of a guided reading type approach. But the correlation <clears throat> between how much they grew and the number of times that they were able to read at an instructional level was 0.8, which, as most people know, is pretty rare to see in a real-world setting. And then last, so we do um, find material that represents instructional level, we pre-teach, we also can practice with 90% known. So we practice math facts, other, other approaches, you know, sight words, etc., letter sounds, survival words with kids with severe disabilities, uh, survival signs, uh, etc. And we use 90% known, so we go and identify which ones they know, use those to teach what they don't know. And when doing so, we see increased retention among kids with cognitive impairments, learning disabilities, etc. We see increased time on task. Even among kids with severe emotional behavioral disorders, we took a kindergarten child who was identified as EBD and had the child practice with 90% known and also with children who are ADHD non-medicated in elementary school and found their time on task increased to 75 to 90% just by simply using known material within the instructional session. Uh, and as last, as I mentioned, oh, we increase retention and long-term retention and generalization of these skills. I wish I had time to go into more detail. If you were interested, you could Google a couple of things. Obviously, Google curriculum-based assessment for instructional design. You could Google a process called incremental rehearsal, which is based on this idea that we've used as an intervention with kids with severe disabilities. Um, I hope to have an opportunity to discuss this more with you in the future, and hopefully you'll enjoy the articles that were included and the questions for discussion. Thank you.